I'm Rachna and I have another interesting lesson for you today. You know, I have a friend of mine and uh, she's pretty explosive, like she's always very loud with her emotions and when we tell her don't be explosive, she kind of gets a little offended because the word explosive has more of a negative connotation and that irks her even more. So I decided to tell her that you're very dramatic. Dramatic? Yes, a better word than explosive. So this is what today's lesson is about. Replacing negative, okay? That means not so nice behavioral vocabulary. So of course there are times you want to describe certain characteristics of people and those characteristics may not be very positive, but it is important to, um, you know, to not use very negative vocabulary when you describe their characteristics. So let's see what are certain words that we could replace um, and make that particular characteristic sound better. So the first one is short attention span. Now what is short attention span? Someone who cannot focus on one thing for a very long period of time. Now it could be you are at a project at work and you know beyond half an hour or an hour you just lose interest and you kind of you know, you deviate, you start looking into your phone or you research or you play a game. So basically you have a short attention span. That means nothing captivates you for too long. Not a very positive word. I mean, imagine if someone came and told me, Rachna, you have a very short attention span. That means I'm not a very focused person. Well, so you could replace it by many interests. Now, for example, a teacher tells a parent that your child has short attention span. Now, that could be a little offensive. What she could say is, your child has many interests. That means he cannot stick to one thing for a very long time. So yes, use many interests instead of short attention span. The next one says irresponsible. Well, this is one of the most offensive uh, adjective you could use to describe someone. I wouldn't like to be called irresponsible. So if a manager has to tell his subordinate that you are very irresponsible, that could create further animosity between the two. So well, do not use irresponsible. What you could use is carefree. Now look how the whole meaning changes. So the manager tells his subordinate, um, Richard, you are very carefree about your work. Still a little better than irresponsible. I mean, imagine you're very irresponsible, not nice, you're very carefree. Well, a better word than irresponsible, and it's a nice way to give feedback when you want to tell someone that you are irresponsible. Yes, the next one is hyperactive. Now, hyperactive is a person who is uh, highly energetic, he cannot sit in one place, he needs to talk a lot, he's, uh, talk a lot. he screams, he yells. So, Active beyond normal, uh, you know, tendency. Now, hyperactive, again, is, uh, it has more of a negative connotation because it shows that it is over and beyond a normal tendency. Okay, so if I have to tell my little niece that you are very hyperactive, can't you just sit quietly? I don't think people around uh, would like the idea. But if I tell her, wow, you are very energetic for your age. So obviously energetic means a person who has high levels of energy and obviously that means he is hyperactive. So if I tell my niece that you are very energetic instead of you're very hyperactive, maybe people would look at it more positively. Okay, now I'm sure at work you have certain colleagues who are very, you know, playful and full of mischief and who play pranks all the time who just can't sit still even for two minutes. Instead of calling them hyperactive, what you could say is, um, you know, this group of uh, my colleagues is very energetic. So remember friends, always try to use more positive adjectives even when you describe negative characteristics of people. The next one says loud. Well, avoid using loud because loud means someone who's very, uh, you know, not only vocal, but also very boisterous and uh, likes her presence or his presence to be felt. So imagine if you say, oh God, you're too loud, I can't stand you. That's rude and that's more of a negative meaning. The nicer way to say is, 
you are <coughs> very enthusiastic. So, enthusiastic again means that you are the one who is initiative or takes initiative for, you know, for everything and who is also very boisterous, but again you don't use the word like boisterous and loud, but enthusiastic again means who is uh, very participative in everything and a better way to say loud, because loud by and large has a negative connotation. So, if you tell someone you are loud, they could get pretty offended, but if you say, oh you are pretty enthusiastic, um, well it would be uh, taken in a better way than loud. Okay, so the next one is stubborn, a complete negative adjective. Now stubborn, you know who is stubborn? Stubborn is a person who just doesn't want to listen or take advice from others. He has his own set thinking, set of thoughts and um, probably even fixed concepts and doesn't want to listen, he doesn't want to budge. I will do what I want and I will do it my way and it has to happen my way. So there are people who don't really like to adjust or are not flexible and uh, <clears throat> you know do not budge from their opinion. So someone who is stubborn is uh, definitely someone who is very difficult to handle and deal with and well trust me most people are stubborn. I am, but just a little bit, not too much, yes? So if you tell someone you are stubborn and even if you say it to a child, they could get pretty angry because stubborn is not a very positive adjective. So instead of using stubborn, all you could say is you are persistent. Now imagine in, you know, you are at your feedback appraisals at work and uh, your manager tells you, you know, your work is good but you are very stubborn. I mean, you would not take it too well, but if he says your work is good overall, but you are a little persistent, you know, that would be a pet of feeling because nobody likes to be called stubborn. So when you want to tell someone or when you want to talk about someone being stubborn, the better word to use is persistent. That is the same thing, they are headstrong and uh, basically they like their own way, yes? Next is poor planner. Uh, this planning is a very important part, especially when you were, when you're working. So you need to plan your day. It could be plan your week, plan meetings, or uh, plan for targets for the next three months. And if you're someone who cannot forecast or cannot see things clearly or have a fixed plan that you'd like to go by, that means you're a poor planner, and probably you just you know take it take things as they come you know each day at a time so there are a lot of people who do not get into planning so they are poor planners but if you tell someone and especially if you tell someone at work or if you talk about your senior and say you know he always gets things done last minute he's a poor planner mm, it's not a very good thing to say and it's not a good way to describe your seniors at work so what you could say is he is present focused. Now present focused means he only lives you know uh, like for the day by the day and doesn't think too much into the future or doesn't plan too much about the future. So present focused means he's someone who focuses only in the present for today he lives in the now. Yeah so he is right now here today and he only has things in his basket for today he does not look into the future. So remember poor planner better word to use is present focus. Okay friends? Well the next one is disorganized. I think most of us are disorganized or somehow we just kind of happen to be disorganized. None of us like it but I think many of us fall into this category. Disorganized is someone who doesn't, you know, who obviously who's not organized. It could be his cupboard, his, his room, his office desk, his cabin, anything or even his own, his own structure in the head, you know. You're not organized, you're disorganized. Again, a very negative way to describe someone. So if you say that um, my friend is disorganized at work or my friend's cupboard is completely disorganized, believe me, it's not a very nice thing. What you could say, and a better and a more professional and a positive word is unstructured, okay? So for example, if I'm at a meeting and if I tell you, if I, if I say, that uh, I am very disorganized in my head with a lot of thoughts. I mean, obviously I'm not speaking too well about myself, 
but if I say I'm unstructured with my thoughts, it is better than you know using the word disorganized. And that is how this replaces disorganized in a better way. Anxious, okay, something that all of us feel. And we do feel anxious when we take big decisions in our life. Now, anxious comes from anxiety. Yeah, so it's a feeling of nervousness, a little fear. You have butterflies in your stomach. It could be before your examination results. It could be uh, when you join a new job. It could be during your appraisals. It could be you've done something wrong at work and now you're heading to your boss's cabin. So you feel anxious. Now, um, for example, if I'm taking a big decision, obviously I'm going to feel anxious. So instead of saying I feel anxious, I'll say, I'm cautious. Cautious means you do not rush into things. And obviously, an anxious person will be cautious. He will be careful before he takes a step. So remember, avoid anxious, use cautious. Okay. And the last word for today is disobedient. Complete no in your vocabulary list. Do not call anyone disobedient. Now, disobedient is someone who just doesn't listen and uh, doesn't take your advice and again does his own thing. So if you tell him to do A, he will do exactly the opposite. Now kids can be disobedient, uh, employees can be disobedient, your friends can be disobedient, you can be disobedient to your doctor also and not take his advice. So someone who just doesn't like to listen, okay? Again, if someone tells me that I'm disobedient, I'm not going to take it in my stride. So what he could say is, you are self-directed. Now, obviously, someone who is disobedient, does not like to listen, will do what he wants. That means he directs himself to do things his way. So a better word to use is self-directed. So if you talk about your children being disobedient, all you could say is they are self-directed. Find something more positive, something better. So well, friends, these are the list of negative words that could be replaced by positive ones. I'm sure you could use this in your daily conversation. I'll be back soon with a new lesson. Till then, take care and bye.